So last week I made a video talking about how the sounds and rhythms of trains helped influence me as a musician. This week we're going to talk about how big time music YouTuber Adam Neely screwed up on a very, very important subject. How many times you have to say chugga before you say choo-choo. So, as a professional musician and also a professional railroader, I am one of the few people that is uniquely equipped to explain this question from both the musical side and from the railroad side. Now, I will start by saying that Adam's analysis from the English language and the stressing of the words was great and correct, but he had one big screw up. So before we get to Adam's mess up, we need to understand how the chuggas actually get created, which means we need to understand how a steam locomotive actually works. Skipping over the simple part of the steam locomotive, where you insert fire, insert water, make steam happen, going to the actual portion where the chuggas come into play, we talk about how the actual steam engine portion of the locomotive actually works. So on your typical steam locomotive, you have what is called the valve and the valve traverses back and forth and it allows steam into either side of the main piston, which is inside the big cylinder that actually powers the driving wheels. As that valve moves, it allows steam to the front or to the back to push the piston forwards or backwards, which then goes out to all the rods and actually makes the wheels turn. These pieces are the actual driving rods, including the connecting rods and the main rod. The rest of these pieces are actually called the valve gear. Their sole purpose is to control the valve and how far the valve can move, and which direction it's going to move in to change the flow of the steam to the main cylinder. So why is this important for the chuggas, you may ask? Well, the chuggas come from the exhaust steam leaving the cylinders and going up the stack. It actually creates a normal shock wave within the stack, and that is the chug that you hear, or the chuff that you hear when a steam locomotive is moving. The reason you have four chuffs per evolution of the driving wheels, you have two cylinders, the left side and the right side, and they have power strokes in both directions. So when the piston's moving forward within the cylinder, it's under power, same as a reverse. And to make sure you don't get stuck with a piston stuck all the way forward or all the way back, the pistons are offset so that when the left side is all the way forward or all the way back, the right side is smack in the middle of its power stroke. So while the left side is weakest, the right side is at its strongest. That way you always have power and you won't get stuck based on the way the wheels clock. What does this mean for the chugga? We know that we have four chuffs per evolution and we know that they're caused by the two different pistons moving and the exhaust from those pistons going out the stack. Well, so the reason that it's a chugga is because each one of those exhaust beats sounds different. Just listen to this clip of Rio Grande Southern number 20 that I took while I was at the Colorado Railroad Museum a couple weeks ago. Each beat is accented like it's a 4-4 bar of music. Chugga, 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 chugga. The reason for this is that each pin and bushing and brass in the rods all wear over time and they wear slightly differently depending on a number of different conditions. As the rings or seals in the valve and in the piston wear, they'll also wear differently and, and maybe steam leaks out packing or, or things like that. And what this leaves you with is that the valve moves slightly differently on each side and slightly different forward versus reverse. And so each stroke in each direction on each side is going to sound different, but each time you get back to that pattern of, okay, it's the left side going forward, it has the same sounding exhaust. And so that is why you get a chugga, 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 chugga sound when a steam locomotive is working under power. So technically, if you were to sound it out, the ch and the g are two different exhaust beats, one that's a little stronger than the other, and then chugga chugga, the other two but in the other direction. So you have left going forward, right going forward, left going back, right going back. Chugga 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 you see? So now we understand how a steam locomotive generally works, albeit a small slice and really not that detailed. Why was Adam Neely wrong? Well, his analysis and his theory was great, but 
right when he posts what it should sound like, he included a picture of a locomotive, and the picture that he included was of a Shea-type locomotive. And a Shea-type locomotive is a logging locomotive that has three cylinders that are attached to a drive shaft so that it gets more torque and can go up steeper hills at much slower speed. So what that means is, per revolution of the camshaft, you get six exhaust beats. And that means per revolution of the wheel, plus another gear ratio, you get a lot of exhaust beats. So to put it in simple terms, where a normal locomotive you'll hear chugga 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 when it's going 10-15 miles an hour. When you hear a Shea going 10-15 miles an hour, it just sounds like <laughs> It's pretty accurate. And that's because the engine is running really, really fast to make the locomotive move really, really slowly because of the gear ratios and all that. And so, out of all the locomotive pictures he could have chosen, he chose the one that didn't fit his example and then goes on to talk about why multiples of three chuggas is totally wrong, which if you ran a Shea slow enough, it would sound like. It would sound like multiples of three chuggas, which he does say would be a malformed locomotive, and there are those of us in the industry that would say that Shea locomotives are malformed locomotives, as are most other logging engines, because when you take something that big with that much power and try to run it through giant iron or low quality steel gears, and you've got lots of vibration from massive pistons moving really fast, stuff tends to break. And so they're notoriously cantankerous locomotives. So malformed may be correct. I hope you guys enjoyed this little nerdy dive into how a steam locomotive makes chugga chugga sounds and why Adam was totally correct in his analysis, save for the picture of the Shea. If you like this video, make sure you check out the other ones on the channel. I talk about music production for all things uh, related to a train video game, of course, as well as some stuff with my rock band and, and things otherwise. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you for the next video. So thanks for watching.